This is Fly Fisherman and Fog Part 2. I'm going to start out by painting some color on the grass on the right hand side. The photo I'm looking at was one that I tweaked in Photoshop, giving it a lot more contrast in color so I could see the differences in the water. Unfortunately, I painted it very, very dark. And later on, I'm going to show you how to lift up the whole thing. Now for the water, I really like the diagonal that I can see in the photograph. It's a little bit darker area where it comes down and it's going to kind of accentuate my fisherman. When I paint the water, I'm using a size 6 brush and I'm just making small horizontal strokes and building up different layers of shadow color in the water. The masking is still on, but I'm not painting the water a solid color. I'm working on dry board, putting the color on, and if it looks too dark, I lift most of it back up with the paper towel so that I just have some suggestions of color. This is what makes the water look like it's moving. Typically, most bodies of water will get darker as they come towards you and lighter as they get farther away. This is because they reflect the sky and the sky gets lighter at the horizon line, typically, and darker and richer as it goes overhead. A lot of times I'm going underneath the lighter areas. And adding more color underneath the masking. In this stand of far away trees, I'm using a very watery green to start with to suggest some dark pine trees on top of the light areas that I push the color away with the yellow water. I don't want them to stand out too much. So once again, if it seems too dark, I'll lift a little bit with the paper towel. But I'll have some that are barely there and some that are more definite against the lighter areas. Trees in a forest are pretty random. You don't want to line them up. You don't want them equally spaced. You want different sizes and shapes and values. And they don't all have to come all the way down to the tree line. And some of them, maybe all you can see is the top of the tree. Okay, the area that I got this little bloom or bubble of color just happened to hit exactly where the two mountains intersect, which is a bad spot to have that. So I'm using, I started with a bristle brush, which wasn't lifting much color, and went to the incredible nib, which will really roughen up your paper, but you can definitely scrape the color off with that. And I'm trying to lift up the color without destroying the paper completely. I dip the incredible nib in water, rub fairly gently, 
and then lift up the color with a paper towel. Okay, some of the fog has very hard edges or it could be a little nicer. So I'm using a toothbrush. This is a fairly firm toothbrush. Toothbrush, the firmness depends a lot on how it was made. So test different kinds of toothbrushes just as you would with any scrubbing brush and see which ones you like better. Soft toothbrushes don't do a whole lot of scrubbing, but they're much gentler on the paper. This is a firm toothbrush, and I'm wetting it down and going in kind of a circular motion. I don't want stripes in my fog. I also use it to reactivate the paint and pull a little bit of the color down into the fog. Fog is rarely pure white and it never has hard edges. Since you can't get your fog on perfectly while it's wet, it's just not going to happen. This is where you go back and tweak it to give it that real sense of reality. You could also use the magic eraser for this, but I'm going to be using that in the next demo. So I wanted to show you a toothbrush. Okay, I don't think I would have that hard line of color in the water if there was really fog coming off of that water. So once I get done with the fog, I'm going to pull the fog down by lifting up some of the color in that blue water behind the fisherman. Isn't that better? Oops, a little more green. Okay, now the grasses. You'll often find you want to change things, and watercolors are actually fairly easy to change. In this one, the grass ended up looking like a monolith. So I'm using Mr. Clean's Magic Eraser. I wet it down, I squeeze out the excess water, and I wipe gently to lift up the color onto the Mr. Clean's Magic Eraser. When the eraser has paint on it, you don't want to rub that back into your paper. You have to rinse that out in your water or turn your eraser where you have a clean side. I'm doing this fairly gently and I just keep going as long as I can see color coming off on my eraser. See how the paper is starting to pill up a little bit. I don't want to end up with ruined paper. So before that happens, I'll quit. It'll dry lighter than it looks wet. So this will dry light enough that I can redo it. Okay, I took the masking off of the water and this white area is pointing right out of my picture. So I need to get rid of that point at the end. And what I do, masking always gives you hard edges. If you're lucky, it may be perfect the way it is, but quite often you want to come back and tweak it 
soften the edges, put shadows underneath some of them. And make sure your finished project looks great. I want the white to look like sparkles in the moving water and not like a big white blob. That's why I'm putting some shadows underneath some of it and softening it up. You can see some of the green got on the fisherman where I didn't have it masked completely. So I'm going to use Mr. Clean's Magic Eraser to wipe most of that off. The highlights in the lighter area of water, I may put a few shadows underneath, but mostly they look pretty much okay. And you notice that they actually go in a kind of diagonal that leads back up to the fisherman. Now I did a pretty good job on the fly fishing, but I'm coming back with a little bit of color and wetness in my brush and just cleaning up the edges. Now since I don't want this to look like a big white blob again, I'm pulling a little bit of color into the farther away fishing line. That gives it a little bit of depth. You have to be careful not to overdo it or else you'll end up having to put your fishing line back on with white. But just a hint of color in there is a good thing. I'm just using the very tip of the brush. Now I've cleaned up the fisherman and the masking lifted up most of my drawing. So I'm going to go back and draw in the detail. I don't know if the fisherman might be better off as a silhouette, but personally I like detail. I think it's fun to do and I can always put it on and decide if it's too much I can soften it or lift it later. You can trace your fishermen also. Now I'm going to use, I, the size 6 is the smallest brush I use. As long as it has a good point, I find I can get great detail. I'm using the same colors for the fishermen that I used in the rest of the painting. If you add a figure to a painting and you use an entirely different palette to paint him, he's not going to look like he belongs. As long as you use the same colors that the rest of the picture have, generally he'll look fine. 
He was wearing pretty much khaki subdued colors. So I'm mixing the golds and the greens. And I just leave a tiny little line unpainted between the bag and the net and his clothes. That way it doesn't all end up blending together. There's his jacket and something else that he had hanging down there. And I'm going to make his pants a little bit warmer color. Maybe a little bit more raw sienna. And I'll add a little more blue to his backpack so that it has a little difference. If you make each individual thing a bright color, a bright blue backpack, bright pants, they're going to stand out too much. So I use a hint of color along with the same colors. I used a hint of blue along with that olive green color. And I used a hint of raw sienna with the olive green color. I'm leaving a line between his face for the skin color I'm using raw sienna and a little bit of red. Now I'm going to add a few shadows thinking where the shadows might be Those are fairly dark, but I lay them in on dry paper and add a little water. Getting the shadows in the right place makes all the difference. That's why it's important to have a reference photo to work from. This got a little dark, so I'm going to lift up some at the top. That's blue, but lighter in the front. More blue for some details. and he's starting to look like a fisherman. He had this black partial glove on his hand. A lot of times I don't know what things are when I paint them. I just paint them because they're there. And often if you stand back and look at your picture, it'll make sense. Paint what you see, not what you know is there.
And there we have a fly fisherman. Now his pole is brown and I'm putting some brown on it, although later I'm going to go back and put a white highlight on the side. And he has glasses. And there he is. Okay, now for these grasses, I don't want it to look like a total washed out mess, so I'm going to just suggest a little bit of the darkness and color that I see in my photo. And keep it very, very watery and light. The paper is kind of roughed up, which actually helps to give it that grass texture. And I'm working on the dry board. Grass isn't lots and lots of little strokes. It's more masses. A lot of times you'll see a shadow behind one area of grass and that forms the area in front of it. That's called negative painting. But it's more little areas of color and value than individual grasses. And a good way to see that is to squint your eyes so that the details kind of disappear and you can see where the values go. So this is looking much better than the monolith. Now this is my Pro White. It's a white ink. I'm putting it on, giving on dry board and then giving it a misting spray. Or adding water so that I get a soft edge. This is going to pretty much disappear as it dries. It depends on how much you use. But it's much better to use the white at the end of your picture when you're done with everything else. Otherwise, you end up with a big muddy mess. At this point, I remembered that there was actually another area of grass sticking out in the river that I had totally forgotten about. So I decided to put that in. And this time, I don't paint it too dark. I keep it very light. And use a little bit of the white to help blend that little area of grass in the back into the picture. You can see I rub a lot with my soft number six brush to blend things in. I'm also putting some white highlights at the edge where the water is hitting that grassy bank. Now one thing I like to do is to put some birds in the sky. These birds are supposed to be very, very far away. So I'm going to put them on and lift up a lot so that they're just barely visible. I decide to give them a hint of warmer color. And put a few stragglers. It just adds a little bit of charm. And here's your finished picture. 
I hope yours turns out as well as mine or better. Happy painting!